um before talking uh, designing for extended reality i'll give a quick intro of what i mean quick recap of uh, what is extended reality so extended reality is an umbrella term it includes uh, ar vr and mr and uh, under ar we have two categories one is augmented reality and uh, one is augmented virtuality and um, where x stands for uh, you know um, it acts like a wild card entry and uh, it's something um, augmented virtual and uh, mixed so x can be like uh, augmented virtual and mixed and r stands for reality so let's dive into uh, designing for extended reality so um before uh, we start like uh, we starting a project in extended reality uh, we need to ask few questions uh, um, like will the project uh, i mean why do we need uh, this particular project to be developed in xr so what is the use of that and uh, can we do this project in the mobile application or web application why exactly we need xr and uh, we shouldn't uh, you know um, use xr for the name sake because uh, it is fancy and it is new term technology and uh, we also need to understand whether the target audience able to understand or um, whether they can afford it because right now uh, xr technology is little bit on a pricey side and i think in the over the years it will be reduced so let's talk about uh, designing for extended reality and uh, designing for extended reality i would say it's like uh, directing a movie so what is the relationship between directing a movie and uh, extended reality like designing for extended reality i would say um, we have two man, uh, two common criteria like one is visual communication and uh, storyboarding and um, if you know uh, um, if you are watching a movie you will be in a center and uh, you will be like uh, in a big screen or you will be watching an immersive movie or something like that what happens is uh, you will be uh, you will be in the center and everything moves around you right so in extended reality what happens is you will be directing like what uh, next thing will come and what what are the scenarios will happen next and what are the use cases will happen next you have to think that and uh, you have to play accordingly like uh, what happens when the user ends up in a wrong turn um, so we have to think like that and uh, visual uh, communication and storyboarding are the main criteria here like um, that shares a common principle from directing a movie and uh, before that uh, i have to tell like we have three techniques in extended reality for designing one is body strumming one is acting and uh, number three is uh, role playing so acting is something um, you know so let's talk about the body strumming so body strumming is nothing about interacting with the physical props in a real world um, physical props like uh, you know when you have uh, mm, you can say something picture yourself uh, you are uh, you know uh, directing a movie and uh, you will be uh, dealing with uh, physical props like um, um, it can be a light or something like that what happens is you will be dealing with the physical props and you will be acting like what happens next uh, uh, something uh, you know uh, when the direct says cut and everything right so they have that uh, sequel what is that uh, frame they do the cut and everything like so we have to do that why is that because uh, i would say it is all about like a directing a movie and uh, it is all about uh, how the user is going to travel through the xr journey so it is about a movie and uh, you don't have any predefined frames right we have mobile and uh, desktop it has like a form factor but in xr we don't have any form factor it is like all around uh, you see the 360 degree so and the second is uh, acting acting is like a role playing a specific uh, scenario like um, i would say what happens like uh, you can consider it as like a payment gateway or something uh, what happens when the user payments doing and after that and uh, next is storyboarding storyboarding is like a overall uh, we have to convey the flow overall flow and uh, let's talk about uh, spatial design with 2d so um, in extended i mean uh, right now we are using a two dimensional um, design that is uh, we'll be interacting everything will be in a flat surface and we don't have deal with uh, three dimensional in spatial design we'll be dealing with uh, three dimensional and uh, imagine yourself like uh, 
you have a, like a big giant screen in front of you and uh, you are seeing like a, um, a chair a table uh, you will be purchasing a chair what happens is like uh, when you click the chair it outs to your uh, room and you can see the visuals like uh, in a 3d form and you can interact with it and you can change the color and uh, everything happens in a real time it deals with uh, three dimension like height uh, length width and uh, in 2D uh, in mobile application, we don't, uh, I mean, we can't do that, right? So everything is in flat. We don't have the third dimension and uh, static interactions. So whenever user clicks and a button or something, it happens in a static, right? So it doesn't have any uh, kind of a 3D uh, where in uh, spatial design you have uh, 3D. Like whenever you touch an object or uh, you know, you, you will get to know like it has an overstate and it reacts to your hand and uh, you can see uh, it is like uh, doing some overstates in uh, highlighting like where you are pointing your hand. So some, yeah, yeah. let's talk about um, perspective drawing. So in 2D designs, we have everything um, under perspective, like one point, two point. In uh, spatial design, it actually utilizes the depth and volume to create a spatial uh, that um, tangibles with the spatial environment and um, flat UI and curved UI. So right now we are using a flat UI. Flat UI means uh, in 2D, I would say, and uh, curved UI is like a uh, theater and uh, you can see uh, you uh, curved uh, screens are there in the theaters and why uh, do we need a curved theaters? I mean, why do we have curved screen? Because um, in movie theater, the projector, I mean, the light can't reach uh, evenly, I mean, at the even distance to the edge of the screen. So what happens is they will do a uh, the stretching, I mean, they curve. So what happens, the light evenly uh, goes through the edges. So um, that is that happens in the theaters, right? So what happens here is, and it also creates you a immersive experience and you feel like you are immersed in that. It's like a big giant screen, right? And uh, in flat 2D screen, you won't feel that. You feel that you are not fully immersive and uh, in curved UI, you can see a lot of uh, things are coming right now and uh, Meta uh, also have like a curved UI uh, where you can see like a fully immersive images and uh, Apple also has a flat UI, I would say. And uh, some of the applications like uh, galleries would have a curved UI where you can see the galleries uh, will be 360, I mean in a full uh, horizontal zone and you can see the gallery is fully surrounded, the images will be fully surrounded by you and um, immersion so immersion is nothing but you feel like you are being immersed in the particular environment uh, either it can be a game or either it can be a digital world um, so what happens is like uh, you mentally feel you are immersed but uh, physically you don't feel uh, you know immersed you feel that you still belong to the physical world and mentally you feel uh, you belong to that world. You, I mean, because visually we are saying, right. So what happens is like visual memory makes you feel uh, you are inside the world, but you have the consciousness of you are aware and uh, you are in the physical zone and um, presence. So presence is nothing but uh, you feel uh, you are a part of that world. And uh, I would say, um, for example, if you are in uh, Himalayans, right? So how do you feel presence in Himalayas? Uh, there are a lot of things like uh, you, I mean, once you are in a digital world and you are in Himalayas, if you feel the temperature and if you feel uh, the weather and uh, the touch and the rainfall and the wind, I mean, the snowfall, everything, you feel that you are a part of that world and you belong to the part of that world. And uh, you feel, uh, um, you don't feel that you are isolated from uh, physical world. So that what presence is. And uh, to achieve presence, I would say we have a uh, sight. So sight is nothing but a visual and uh, hearing, touch, balance, proprioception, smell, temperature, taste and uh, nociception. And I would say emotion is easy to achieve and the presence is a little bit harder to achieve. Um, because um, it has like a lot of other items like uh, smell and uh, touch and everything has to be incorporated there to feel uh, the presence, right? So what happens is like we can easily achieve the presence like how we, I mean like side. So 
um consider yourself you are in a virtual zone and uh, uh, you are seeing a visuals right so in that you can feel that you are a part of the world and it will be coupled with other things like a touch so touch is basically uh, you can have it in a tactile i mean uh, you have the controllers where uh, whenever you have the hmd like head mounted displays what happens is like uh, you will have a controllers so whenever you click or something uh, you do a action you feel a haptic uh, sensation haptic uh, feedbacks will be received on your hand you feel that you are actually touching that and you feel that uh, whenever you touch a physical object you feel that uh, you know the physical contact right so that is recreating here and uh, hearing is nothing about spatial audio so spatial audio is about uh, how you hear in the digital i mean the physical world like whenever uh, someone speaks in a long distance you hear like that is like a so the volume is so low and uh, whenever someone speaks in the right uh, right hand side and you feel like the sound is coming from the right hand side right so that is what a spatial audio and uh, that is what hearing and balance is something uh, it's a motion tracking and that is like uh, where you are in the virtual zone and uh, you feel like whenever you make a movement uh, um, like if you're moving a hand you can see uh, in a virtual object uh, your hand is moving like in a digital avatar so that makes you feel that you are a part of the world what happens consider uh, you know you are in a digital world and you are moving your hands and legs but you can't able to see your hands and legs right so that uh, makes you a sensation that you don't belong to the physical i mean digital world and uh, that makes you conscious uh, you know uh, consciously feel uh, uh, you are belong to the physical world so tracking the balance like motion tracking uh, tracking the hands and legs makes you feel that you are a being a part of that world and uh, procio and um, proprioception is nothing about uh, uh, location tracking and movement uh, like how you are moving in the digital world and uh, we also need to think about uh, even though we are in a digital world uh, like if you have a staircase you have to go to the first floor right you are in the ground floor uh, consider uh, you know how you will go to the first floor you can't i mean you can't uh, replicate whatever you are doing in the real world like um, climbing the staircase that's what we will do right climbing the staircase or uh, going to the lift right to reach the next floor um, but in the digital world you don't have to do the exact thing i mean that makes people you know more uh, stressful right so we don't have to do that we have to think like how to make uh, you know users to make go to the another floor how to make the users uh, go to the i mean uh, next level or something and uh, that's what procio proprioception and uh, smell smell is nothing about uh, how we are going to i mean smell is uh, how the environment smells right uh, if you are in a food uh, you know restaurant you feel like a uh, smell is there right you feel that you are feeling immersed in that so if you are in a digital world and especially you are in a restaurant and if you feel the smell like that uh, smell of the food uh, like uh, sushi or a biryani you feel like you are belong to the part of the world and you don't feel that you are isolated and uh, temperature taste and uh, noception but uh, i would say smell taste temperature and uh, that are very really hard to achieve and right now uh, there are still progress and there are a lot of research going on and i would say that i came across like one interesting topic for noception um, that is like uh, feeling the pain they have like a jacket so what is you have to wear the jacket and uh, consider a picture yourself you are playing a video game uh, shooting video game so whenever someone shoots you you feel the actual pain that is emitted by the electric so they have jackets so there are a lot of things happening in the industries to feel uh, you know you are being i mean to make the presence and uh, user engagement in 2d format i would say like uh, we have a form i mean a form factor called desktop and mobile ap applications i mean mobiles we have a standard uh, form right in xr i mean in extended reality we don't have that uh, we have a 360 degree that doesn't mean uh, we can place the ui and visual object everywhere right so we have to implement how we are interacting in the real world how we are um, so we have a comfortable zone and we have maximum zone and we have peripheral zone and uh, we have curiosity zone comfortable zone is like uh, that will be like uh, minus 30 to plus 30 degree that we, you will be focusing on and the maximum is like a little bit elongated i would say like minus 55 to plus 55 
and uh, we have main content like minus 85 to eight, uh, plus 85 and the peripheral zone is like uh, you can't uh, i mean uh, if something happens i mean uh, you can't clearly see it is blood and uh, if some movement happens you can sense that there is there is some movement is going on right so we have to implement what we are seeing and exact thing in the xr like the content should be placed within the minus 30 and plus 30 degree uh, for the better uh, user engagement and it should be placed after 1 meter away from you so that uh, the ui will feel like more composed and calm and uh, that is for the horizontal and uh, we also have uh, vertical like uh, you know in vertical it is so short i would say um, because of if you observe if you i mean if you observe while you are looking you can see like you are observing a lot of things in horizontal zone but not on the vertical zone um so same happens here so we have to design the ui and everything within the particular zone like that is minus 40 to plus 420 and uh, that is the user engagement zone and uh, it can go up to minus 67 and uh, plus 75 uh, but we have also have to think about how far it is from so if you have uh, following like a minus 60 to uh, plus 67 it has to be placed uh, somewhere like a 2 meters or 3 meters away from us so that you can see like the entire screen right if it is so big you can't able to see and you have to tilt your head up and down like what is happening there so you don't have to design something like that um, you know you have to design within the particular uh, area and uh, interaction so interaction should be like more natural i would say and while um, it has to follow how we are incorporating in a physical world like how we are grabbing the object or like uh, how we are grabbing a coffee mug right so we will be touching and we'll be doing the interaction of grabbing something right so we will be doing the same interaction in the xr and we have to follow uh, some interaction based on the real time and um, physical manipulation is preferred over gesture so what is a physical manipulation physical manipulation is how we were controlling or grabbing the object a gesture is something like uh, you can swipe gestures like moving the icons i mean moving the screens left and right you can do that but uh, physical manipulation is something how we were grabbing the object so that is a manipulation over here so you have to manipulate how you are doing in a physical world and um, it has to be a direct interaction and uh, you can see in the left image over here whenever the user touches it you can see the touch point is highlighted and uh, it navi i mean it tells that user is uh, i mean the hover state is visible like user touch point is visible and uh, you can clearly see like where you are pointing and in here you can see like how uh, the grabbing object will be look like so we'll be like grabbing the object how we are supposed to do in a physical world and uh, and we have to use a standardized gesture in industry right now we don't have lot of standardized gestures and there are lot of research going on like what are the things we will have to follow and uh, we don't have to use uh, some uncommon gestures like uh, if we have a virtual object i mean virtual object like uh, for example uh, mm, a coffee mug is there and uh, you can't simply do uh, come here something like that you have to you know um, you have to do a gesture that is standardly practiced across the xr world so you have to do that and uh, you can't simply use uh, some random gestures over here and uh, hand ui so hand ui in uh, mobile applications and uh, desktop application you can see like hamburger menu and everything is there right so user know where to get the main menus and uh, where uh, it is there because uh, they are getting used to that right so here we have an ui so what happens is like uh, you don't feel like a um, lot of menus are floating over here what happens is when you tilt your hand you can see like lot of uh, interactions and lot of buttons are will be there so it is easy to navigate like what are the things you have to do like you can see in the left uh, thing you can see like we can have a home and a camera icon and a settings so this depends on the application what you are building for example if you are building a um sketching application you can uh, you know you can have and ui something like uh, you have uh, brushes and brush stroke and what are the colors you have uh, you don't have to so that makes you easily you know do the things uh, you don't have to click here and uh, do the i mean go the uh, what is the scrolling and you don't have to do the scrolls and uh, you don't have to do that so it makes you uh, feel like you know it makes you 
do your work easily and uh, you can see in this example also this is like a prototype and uh, it doesn't have like you can see how it is interacting while stretching and uh, when the user releases it also goes to the particular zone the default zone and while touching you can see like how it is like uh, you know it folds like a paper like how it is supposed to do in the physical world and uh, yeah so uh, the technology is evolving so fast i would say and uh, right now uh, xr design we are following what we are following in the 2d world i mean what we are doing in the mobile application or desktop application like hover states and everything are same because uh, we are now following the 2d applications what we are supposed to do and uh, now 3d i mean now in xr it is evolving like new input fields are coming and uh, the interactions are new interactions and new how the user will interact and everything is changes um you can consider like um, you know um, whenever uh, you wear a headset hmd you have to have uh, hand tracking cameras so that you, that enables you to track the hand at navigates like where exactly you are pointing and uh, you also have uh, ant controllers um, you know it acts so acts as the same purpose where you do multiple options like multiple uh, activities over here and now uh, meta also announced a neural wristband that is like 2 years ago what happens is uh, you don't have to wear uh, what is that controllers you don't have to need controllers and you don't have a camera i mean hand tracking camera so you just simply wear the headset and you have to wear a neural wristband what happens is the whatever the interactions i mean whatever even the smallest interaction i mean smallest pressure created in your hand it detects in the neural so it detects and uh, it uh, replicates in the visual like where you are exactly pointing so based on your uh, control and uh, even i mean you can play uh, some games like you know by clicking like you don't have to click if this is a flat surface you have just uh, make a small uh, pressure that will detect even so there are like new input device are coming and uh, this is a neural wristband by meta and uh, we also have a smart watch integration and uh, smartwatch integration is done this project is done by double point um so it can be paired with uh, google uh, smartphones i mean google uh, pixel watches and uh, what happens is like you don't have to really depend on the controllers and hand tracking cameras so you can simply uh, you know control within your watch smartwatch once you pair your watch what happens is like you can double tap and make your gestures and uh, you can um, you can see in this image so this guy is wearing the smartwatch that is paired with the headset and you can see uh, it doesn't need any kind of hand traction control or uh, it's, i mean hand tracking uh, headset i mean controls and uh, controllers so you can simply wear the watch and you can click and you can view and you can do multiple options over here so and we also have like a omni tracking omni uh, treadmill where you know you can uh, in uh, digital world uh, whenever you want to travel like uh, whenever you want to move from x direction to the x direction so what happens is you will be navigating that is called teleportation so you will be uh, clicking the button over uh, in the controllers or you will have some gesture based upon the games so what happens is you will uh, move to that particular place without uh, you are moving physically so that doesn't makes you feel so immersed right and uh, that doesn't make you feel that you are a part of the world so what happens is like um, you can run in a treadmill what happens it is a circular treadmill um, you can uh, run over that you feel uh, and you will also move accordingly in the digital world that makes you feel that you are actually running in the digital world and uh, that makes you feel uh, you are a part of a digital world and um, we have a lot of design tools i would say and uh, from the top i would say we have unity and unreal engine that is two major game engines uh, uh, for making a rapid i mean for making a high fidelity prototypes and uh, building applications and uh, we also have mrtk software kit from uh, microsoft and uh, interaction sdk uh, from meta and we also have lot of uh, sdks like uh, uh, snapdragon spaces and uh, all and also uh, snap snap snaps also have their own interaction sdk i mean own sdks and uh, every giant has their own sdks and uh, blender we also have blender here so we can create a 3d modules in the blender and export it over here 
and um, busy shapes xr or like a no code platform um, which a designer can use that like uh, it doesn't make you can make a lot of uh, xr applications like a prototyping you can make a rapid prototyping in that particular product and uh, spline is only available on apple vision pro and uh, it is not available on any other devices and it is also like uh, xr you can do a uh, prototyping for xr and uh, figma for uh, prototyping like how the ui will look like and uh, procreate we have and um, miro for ideation and uh, notion for documenting like from the start to the end like what are the things we are going through and uh, yeah thank you so much